All right, guys. Wanted to do a, a quick unboxing and maybe even a little uh, little test video here as we're going through. So nice day in May 1st. Uh, got myself a new toy. Uh, been wanting to do a new uh, a new piece of equipment for chilling. Uh, didn't know whether I wanted to do counterflow. Uh, I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about plate. Uh, I have an immersion chiller now, but it's a DIY. I did it myself. A uh, piece of copper from Home Depot that uh, put around a, a paint can and I put it together myself. So I uh, had an extra $200 uh, and gotten a, a little uh, a little $200 check for some work I'd done, kind of a, a side job type of thing. So trying to come up with what did I want to improve in the brewery. And the chiller has definitely been one that I've been thinking about doing. Uh, ask the guys on Brewtubers, if you haven't checked them out, www.brewtubers.com and wanted to get some feedback because so, everybody's got something different. Everybody's got immersion, some guys have got the counterflow, um, like Wally and Matt have a really nice stainless steel counterflow. Um, I think uh, Gary does as well. Uh, Dave and Jerry, um, Brewmaster Jerry and Big Dog Brewing. Uh, Dave, they both have the immersion style. Um, the Hydra or this is the Cust, the Tricoil. Uh, so decided to go with the immersion after thinking about it in terms of what I can clean, what I can see, do I need to run the pump to be able to clean it out, that type of stuff. I decided to go with immersion. Um, thought for ease of use and what I use, um, how I pump the water through it, it made the most sense to stick with immersion. That's what I have currently and I figured I'd stay with that. Um, really thought long and hard about the counter flow. That was probably the, the hardest thing. And I kind of put it out to the guys. And it was kind of a split decision based off of, of what they have. So I thought I'd do a quick uh, little unboxing here and see what we got. And then we'd kind of go from there and see from that point. Uh, just showed up in the UPS. So see what kind of shipping it comes with. So, probably my receipt. Uh, thanks for choosing Cus Brewing. Uh, before you let it, before you use it, let it soak for five minutes and brewing cleaner, PBW, bar, friends, OxyClean, give it a good rinse and you're ready to put your chiller to work. So that's pretty simple. Put it in a bucket, clean it. Uh, gives you your care and that type of stuff that goes along with it. Pretty. So this again is Cus Brewing Chiller. It's the tri -coil, tri -coil. Uh, I believe it is uh, 2.1, I think is what the exact name is. So I'll get the uh, wrapping off and we'll take a look at it and see what we got. All right, so the directions suggest a five minute soak in a cleanser, PBW. So thank you to the official sponsors of Brewtubers, Five Star Chemical. So that's getting a five minute soak in 150, 160 degree water with PBW now. We'll get it all cleaned up, get it rinsed off, and we'll go from there. All right, got a, actually probably about a 20 minute soak in the PBW. So got it all scrubbed down, just gave it a quick wipe down basically with a sponge in the PBW and cleaned up and then rinsed it off. So she is looking pretty shiny and pretty good. So. Again, thanks again to Five Star Chemical for sponsoring Brewtubers. Appreciate it. Uh, good products from you guys, Star Sand, PBW. Uh, use them both. Use them all the time. So do appreciate it. And thank you very much, guys. All right. I think I'm going to let this drip dry for the afternoon. And then we'll give it a, a shot uh, when we start brewing tomorrow. All right. We'll check in then. I wanted to do a little testing on this. So on my right hand side is pretty obvious. It's a DIY. Um, and on the left hand side is the cuss chilling, the tricoil. So I wanted to do a, a little uh, test on gallons per minute that it runs through it. And then I'm going to test it obviously with the brew today. So I'm doing the Saison uh, brew tubers yeast experiment for 2021 today. So just got this in yesterday, got it cleaned, air dried overnight, 
Uh, again, I put it in, in uh, PBW for about a 20 minute soak, about 150 degree water. Let it rinsed it, cleaned it up, let it sit, air dry. Um, so I'm going to do a quick little time lapse with this, I believe. I'm not sure how the video editing is going to go with it. So apologize if it's really long, but I wanted to kind of check and see uh, gallons per minute, how long it takes to fill up a gallon jug between the two of them using the same style hose. Um, or same spigot. Now I typically don't use fresh water. Um, I actually pump out of that pool um, and I'll give you a temperature here as we get into the, the brew itself uh, but I pump water out of the pool through the chiller and then back into the pool so I don't like wasting water on my chiller if I don't have to. So uh, for this purpose I'm just going to do one gallon each and test the time it takes to run a gallon through it at the same uh, I'm going to use my spigot here just outside of here uh, but just to see how long it takes to run one gallon through each one of these and then just do a quick check with that all right we'll be back in just a minute so we'll do the same thing so now we're hooked up with this but I am going to blow the air, air out of this because this line is not full so give it a second here blow the air out through so we're at least giving it a similar side back. Right. So that's off. So now what we'll do is this will basically be on here. I'm going to hit the start button, or I'll turn this on, hit the start button. Much easier already just because I don't have to worry about uh, this thing falling over. So, I missed the stop first time through, so that was 20 seconds plus, you know, minus that uh, two or three steps. So, probably we're looking at about 17 seconds or so. So, not bad. The big test would be uh, actually the pump out of the pool, so that'd be the next one we do. All right, so now we're gonna do a test on what I actually do. So that is a submersible pump in my pool. Uh, I've got it hooked up. We'll do a gallons per minute test on that versus the tricoil there. So this is a little bit better test in terms of what I do. Um, may not be a great test for what you do, uh, but that's kind of through the hose. That hose typically will run back into the chiller in the pot, and then I run a hose back out into the pool and run it right just going to recycle it back through so keeps it pretty good and uh, moving fairly well so we'll do a test like this and see what kind of uh, time we're getting out of this and different than a spigot so a little bit more specific to my situation all right same thing we got a timer here so we'll uh, got my basically the ability to turn it on and turn it off so we will start there so ready and go right there it overflows it's next to the pool so you get an idea definitely a little bit slower through the hose but I thought that would be a little bit more specific for what I have I don't get as good a flow as I would out of a spigot so well, 30 seconds there About to overflow. Stop. All right, 47 seconds. That's off. So, 47 seconds. So, reset it. And we'll hit the start. Twenty-two seconds. All right, so got the probe in, 
reading 50, 54.7. So that'll be the water we're chilling with. So it gives us an idea of what we're working with. All right, so we're at 211. We are boiling. Everything is sanitized now, so I give it five minutes of that. Um, I'm gonna plug in the chiller and get that started. So right after I plug in, I will start the timer up on there and then we'll see the actual temperature because that, again, the wort is running through the system. So it's coming up through, out through my uh, whirlpool arm. It's gonna be whirlpooling around the chiller here. So cold goes in this side through the chiller and then hot goes back out and we're going back through the, uh, back into the pool. So 211 at this elevation is what is set. So we'll get ready to go here. All right, just plugged it in. We'll hit start on the chiller. So you can see the hose is moving just a little bit as it's going along. I will turn off the heat. So watch how fast we drop. I got the rip tie on full as fast as she'll move the work through. this up so we'll set that right on top so we can drain. A nice little system right there to be able to let it drain out as it's going through. So uh, let's see, 45 seconds and we're down to the 180s. <laughs> it's pretty sinking fast. Uh, this is, we're going to be pitching Bell Saison um, yeast on this. So one minute, we're down to 180. That's impressive. So this is the first time through for this guy, so we'll see how it goes. Um, Bell Saison, according to Lalamond, 68 degrees. Uh, they said four days for full attenuation. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna chill down to 68. So see where it goes. So that'll be a good test for us to see what we end up with. So I'm just gonna let this run and see how fast we're able to get this through. I'm not taking a, a sample. So three minutes, 126. sub 70 in less than 10 minutes. Pretty stinking fast. All right, we are at pitching time. 10 minutes, 42 seconds. Well, I would call that a success. Absolutely. So I'm gonna transfer into the fermenter and then pitch the yeast, get ready to roll. All right, guys, so I just wanted to finish up the review. Um, this is actually July now, so you saw the video from May, uh, went through, um, used it multiple times now, have had no problems with it whatsoever. Um, you can see, does this color just a little bit? They said that's gonna happen. They said you can put it back in star sand, let it soak, um, do a cleaner with it as well, and bring it back to it. So I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, copper does that. They said the only thing to be careful with is if it does start to turn that bluish green with it all in directions, all expected to be. Um, no problems with workmanship, everything is held up great, works awesome, fittings are very nice on the ends, it sets up really well. Um, you can see you know, the pool in the background that I'm using. Uh, just brewed today, I did a collab with Matt at Rec Brewing, and we pitched, uh, both had Kvike strains we were doing, um, and we chilled from 212 to 85, which is what our pitching temperature was, and I did that in 
with 85 degree water, which is in my pool now. I did that in about 10 minutes as well. So um, obviously didn't go as far down as what you saw in the video, but I can't say enough. This has been an excellent choice for me. Um, it is cheaper than the Hydra. Uh, so if you're looking and trying to figure out, you know, do I go with uh, Jaded Brewing? Do I go with Cusp Brewing? This is cheaper. Um, been great customer service so far. I had no problems with it, shipped on time. Um, everything came as packaged. You saw how it came. So I've been very happy with this. Uh, it's been a great, great upgrade to the brewery. So if you're interested in upgrading your chiller, I would highly recommend it. Um, I can't say anything bad about it. There isn't any negatives that I've had out of this product at all so far. So looking forward to having a nice chiller that works in a lot less time than my DIY did. So if you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. Uh, but I've been real, real happy with this and uh, can't support it enough and, and say it's a, it's a great product. So I would highly recommend it if you're looking for a new chiller. All right, guys, cilantro.